Jürgen, obviously this season you've had a few big score lines and <laughs> look over Bournemouth. You followed that up with a two win win a two one win over Newcastle. Seven 0 over United then obviously was the defeat to Bournemouth. So what Liverpool can we expect? What Liverpool are you expecting A good one. Um I understand 100% where you're coming from. Yes, that's a strange, a very average season we play so far uh, in general, and um, having a couple of the highest results in our in this club's history, which is absolutely strange. Um, and I, I think, and I said after the Leeds game that I thought the game was the best we played this season, and. Um, I know that a lot of people probably thought Leeds was not really up to it, stuff like this. But um, I was sad as well. I got asked the question after the game: how it's possible to play um, that the two halves were that different? I didn't see that, to be honest. I know it was not as spectacular in the first half, but it was preparing, it was calm, it was convinced and convincing. It was um, good against a deep defending side. You cannot create. Especially in our situation, you cannot create just second after second after second. You need to work for your moments, and that's what we did in the first half. And we're um, anyway up to nil, which is absolutely a fantastic result for half time. And uh, second half, yes, then it was even we stepped up. But that's how it is. It was for Leeds then really difficult uh, to deal with us, um, and the goals we scored were obviously absolutely exceptional. So it was a, st a very stable. Um, Performance, which is very important, and that's where we have to build on. I cannot sit here and now um, um, guarantee any kind of um, results or whatever. But I, I said it before, weeks ago, months ago, we have to guarantee performance levels, and that's definitely what we have to do now. Um, and knowing that in this game again, uh, uh, we, we use. It was not like this. We had more more shots, more finishes, but not on target that many. Um, so close next to post or whatever these kind of things, where we, um, which I consider as chances as well. But afterwards, it looks like we had seven chances and scored six times. That was not the case. So, but we have to be ready for not scoring early. We have to be ready for um, all the difficulties which you can face in a football game, and um, and then overcome it and and still um, stay. And stick to the to the plan and stick to the way we want to play, and that was I like most in that game that we, I saw our plan the whole game, and that's what we have to do again. Obviously, the levels at home this season still being pretty consistent in terms of results, and four out of the next five games are at home. So, what opportunity do you feel does that give you to at least ask the question of those above you? Can you hang on to what you've got? Don't know. And when you are in a super moment in the season, the only game you have to be worried about and you have to think about is the next one. If you are in not a good situation, the only game you have to think about is the next game. There's no alternative to that. Um, and that's exactly what we do. I couldn't care less where we play after tomorrow, to be honest. It's just um, about the game tomorrow. It's about Nottingham Forest. It's about showing all the respect we, we have for them. With Steve Cooper, they are in a difficult situation. They will fight for their lives. Um, definitely, they will each point they can grab. Is, um, will be massive, and um, if they can get three, it will be super massive, and that's what, what that's the team I expect. They will, that's definitely the opposite of a friendly game, and that, that's what we have to be prepared for. Um, but it's Enfield, and we have to use that as well. That's true. But um, one game, well, so if we take it game by game, there's no other chance to do it, and then um, we will see. Whatever we can do in this season is only. The only thing what gives us any kind of chance is winning an awful lot of games. If you don't do that, we don't have to really talk. And I don't like that always talking about we win one game, then I have to talk about what would it mean if we win the next four. That makes no sense. All our focus on Nottingham. I just wanted to touch again on, on Trent's switch of position or hybrid position because it's obviously been met with quite a, a positive reaction. I just wonder now, yeah, is it too early to say whether that's the role for him moving forward or? Is that his long-term progression now? We will see that. We will see that. Trent is on each position he played for us was always a super important player. Um, this now slightly advanced role um, suits him in the moment really well. That's good. It's a, it's a challenge for everybody else to 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 cover the spaces when we lose the ball uh, theoretically. But that with him there, we didn't lose that many balls, which was helpful as well. 
Um, and yeah, that's it pretty much. But it's not written in stone or whatever. Why should we? Um, he he can play in different ways, and um, how he played the last two games was was really really good. That's true. Yeah, unfortunately, Bobby picked up a muscle issue a little bit. Um, we will see how long that takes. It's not too serious, but yeah, it's definitely out for um, tomorrow. And yeah, next week we have two more games. I would say they are impossible as well. And then we will see. Then we have to take it day by day. That's actually ruined my next question because I was going to ask you about having all six of your front six available and, and how you pick between them but it's five now how do you still pick between those five is it about looking at the player's form about targeting the opposition in certain ways how will you decide the ticket into this team must be and will be definitely again counter pressing so that's how everything started I wouldn't say we, we lost it a little bit out of eyesight, no, but uh, we, we have so many, I saw so many games from us where I didn't like that, and um, that's a pretty strict thing. That doesn't mean that all five now available, and especially with Bobby, all six can do that pretty well. Uh, but if you do it in the game you play, you have a good chance to start again. So that's it. So. Um, but we have opportunities to change, of course, and we will see how we do that. And now we have to change in the next few, uh, two, two weeks, we have five games. Huh? So, yes, there will be changes, and that's good. Hopefully we can have at least these five then, or maybe from a moment on, and the six again. Um, that would be absolutely great. And um, But everybody will play, everybody is super important to us. Um, but again, the ticket will be um, the desire to to win the ball back after we lost it because that always we had so many had so many times where we where that made a difference in football games and especially against deep defending sides it's super important otherwise you constantly have to defend counter attacks um, and that's what is some one of the most difficult things in, in football because the space is really big and um, Sometimes um, better timing of the opponent. All of a sudden, it's a speed is not a decisive thing anymore of the defender. It's just a moment, and then they are gone. And it's a one-one situation with Ali. So we have to do that, and that's a big part of decision making for all positions. You mentioned it with Vinny before, talking about Nottingham Forest form um, and what you expect from them. Do you often see a change in teams who struggle at this sort of stage of a season when they are absolutely desperate for points and facing a, a different beast than maybe the team that's only won one of their last 14? No, I, so we had now our last meeting obviously already prepared everything, so it's a, a rather pragmatic style now. It's now clear, it's, it's long balls, early set pieces, taking them there. Um, so um, I know Steve can play has the ability as a coach, as a manager, to, to play different ways, but obviously probably um, confidence is not on the highest level after the, the recent run of results, um, and so going there, becoming more pragmatic it makes absolutely sense, and that's a team we have we have to expect, but it all starts all with winning challenges, and that's what everybody can do, and that's what they will try to do definitely. And then they have speed up front, technique in midfield, experience in the last line, so there's everything there actually, so I, I can't explain 100% uh, why um, it didn't work out that well now. Um, they had a super spell early, late last year, early this year, and then from a moment on it didn't work out for them anymore um, as well. But not all performances were, were not worth a point, they, or, or, or three points, sometimes they have to be lucky. But the quality they have is, is clear. And if we wouldn't respect what we do, definitely, if we wouldn't respect that quality, we would be already um, on the wrong side. And um, because up front, yeah, David Gibbs, Y, Johnson, and Taibo, they all can cause you massive problems. And they have, obviously, it's a big squad. Uh, they have much more options as well. So, um, yeah, we will see who Steve will line up, but um, we, we accept a, a really tough game. Scorers. 
he's broken so many records this season. And you said before you, you felt it was an average season. It's been a challenging season. What does that say about him that he's continued to break those records? Yeah, I think that's on no doubt. I think the the, the uh, really. Um, but I, I know, so like when I worked together with him for so long and um, was always stood more or less next to him when he when he broke the next record. Um, but last week when I heard him, the most left-footed goals in the Premier League history, I have to say that's insane. But when you see the names below, Fowler and Percy, Giggs, stuff like this, Premier League greats, absolutely. Um, so that's massive. Huh? So that's massive, and how it always is in life. As long as you are together, you appreciate some things. Maybe not as much as you should. We do, but um, yeah. Saying that, um, surpassing uh, Robbie um, in another uh, in another um, stat, I know that Mo likes these kind of things and will uh, fill his tank definitely for the game. But um, in the end. He's not only I, I don't know have to, don't know the numbers about um, his assists, but that's pretty good as well. So he doesn't forget that um, it's important or really nice to break a record, but much more important that we win the game. And for that, um, you sometimes rather pass the ball than shoot yourself. Carl, Hi, yeah. um, just go back to Trent and his position. How much time have you had to work on that with him? And what does that mean? Yeah, a week, but it's not. A, how I said it. After, I said it. It's not the first time that he pl that we play it like that. We have a lot of situations where it's it's slightly different, but it's not as as different as we had it in in, in some other games where Trent wasn't um, all the time is right back position or higher up or these kind of things. So yeah, we had a week. So that's absolutely okay um, when you when the Trent is a smart player. But it's much more about how we set it up around than the Trent can um, play the position was never we were never in doubt but you have to set it up around that then because there are moments when he's um, again when we lose the ball we are where we, we have a different formation where's Robo in these moments um, where are virtual and Ibu in these moments so these kind of things um, how do we get him on the ball so because that's obviously important and we sit here and talk about it and um, Maybe we do it like this tomorrow or not. We will see. But if Trent shows up there, maybe gets a man marker. Uh, that's possible, obviously. And then you get, don't get on the ball. Then we have to deal with that. These kind of things. So it's um, it's now not the solution for all the football problems we had this year. But um, he has potential to 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 play that position. That was always clear. Um, but especially in the way we do it now, with defending on the right back and and, and offensively being there, that's absolutely fine. And we will see where it leads to. Just another position of question from there. Um, Darwin's been here a whole season, most part of the whole season, and he's got a decent goal return. I'm sure is he still, he's not been in the team starting recently, but is he, is he still trying to find a role within that front three? Because he's, he's done left, he's done sort of centre. Well, Darwin is a different is a player is a different with a, a player with a different skill set to all our other players. So that's good. That's good. He's, he's a real handful. He's a machine. He's, um, and he will score a lot of goals. He scored already a decent number of goals. So that's all fine. But yes, of course, he's still adapting. His English is still not great, if not if existing at all. We are working on that massively. So it's not helpful to go through a a, a, a difficult debut season for the whole team. Which makes it then for a striker. How can a striker shine when, when the whole team is struggling? So that's not possible. But he had super moments for us, absolutely. But was injured in some moments and suspended in other uh, moments. And that's um, that's an effort, but it's no problem at all. This is a, a long-term project, and I understand um, that he wants to play desperately from the beginning and stuff like this. That's all fine. But we have to find for us a way that it works really for us again. And then we have to fit in the players that we really can use the, the specific strengths as well. And um, I, I am completely fine with the situation. So, but I understand that you know, Darwin is not always fine. But it's not that he smiles in my face when I, when, when he realised that he will not start. It's not like this. Oh, thank you, boss. Um, anyway, I had no time. Um, so that's um, not like that. But it's um, absolutely fine. It's um, that's how we have to deal with the situation. When you have five, six players available up front, 
I have to make decisions. That's good. That's good. That's how it should be. And then we will see. Um, and the boys, the door is miles open. But the more sessions we have, the more sessions you have to uh, to show up. And he came on and was exceptional. To be honest, he was exceptional. Not only the goal he scored before that as well. It was absolutely exceptional. It was exactly the right way. Everybody who came on was like on fire. And that's what we need. And then, how I said, we have now five games in two weeks, and Darwin will start games definitely. He's a centre forward who plays on the left when he plays on the left, so that's how it is. Yeah, but we, we, we need definitely, it's, it needs a specific setup that he can play and defend in the centre. So that's how it is. Playing in the centre is not a problem, there's a machine, but then we have to make sure that we really that we understand as a team. And again, we were not stable for a real for a long spell in that season. So that's how it is. And then you have all of a sudden um, the boys on top of the, all the problems we had, you have to adapt to a, to a, to a different defending um, striker up front as well. So that's that's how it is. If football would be that easy, you just put the um, 11 players with the most potential um, together on a pitch and then hope that it works out and you don't need me or other, or other managers. So it's really about finding to tuning it you find the fine tuning, and that's what we are, what we are still doing, obviously. And this season, we don't know where will this season will end up. But after this season, there's another season, and I'm already, with that's already in in my mind as well. So like we have to build on what we do now and what we learn now. In a, we learned a lot which we didn't want to learn, and now we have maybe the opportunity to learn a few things we really can use, and um, that's how I see it. And um, that means everything's fine. He can play. Absolutely, both positions 100%, and both positions really well, and did that for us already. And how is that? I'm completely fine with it. He has to learn English. That's how it is because of all that we we, we can translate everything. But in training sessions, um, we cannot have four languages and 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 translate it. And I think it's football language, so that will help him massively. Um, and yeah, that's it. Last one here for the embargo. He's training exceptional. Fabio Cavallo is training exceptional, to be honest. All the boys. It's, uh, that's the hardest part. Never had it the whole season, now we have it, and all of a sudden I leave five players at home and they're all, um, all, all of them, all of a sudden, um, are not even in the squad. Crazy. Nat, Reese, crazy. Um, Maybe, so Harvey has to be um, is very very close, absolutely close um, to 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 start again. Um, and Fabio has to say for the situation which in which he's now with training training on an absolute super level and not being involved, um, how he deals with it. I have to say that's kind of a role model. Not that he is happy with the situation, but he never gives up. I have to say it's unbelievable. Really, I think um, I don't think it was probably his best skill before he arrived here because he was this super super talent, but he, but he still is. Um, but yeah, the character he shows here is exceptional.